is John Petridge, and my call is Whiskey 7, a Fox uniform. I am a uh, rather peripheral member of the uh, Phase 4B uh, AMSAT uh, satellite ground team. Michelle Thompson, the leader, has asked me to make a short video of my homebrew, um, I would say experimental, uh, transceiver for the Phase 4B satellite. A bit of background is relevant. Um, the Phase 4B satellite is requiring a, the data uplinks or transmission to the satellite at 5.7 gigahertz. The satellite then sends back down to Earth to an Earth receiver, ground station receiver, at 10.3 gigahertz. So uh, the, the radio system that I'm going to describe to you transmits on 5.7 gigahertz and receives on 10.3 gigahertz. This uh, concept is um, not unique to the uh, satellite system. It's basically a cross-band transceiver. Uh, could, the same process of transmitting at 5.7 and receiving on 10.3 could be used for terrestrial communications or uh, equally well for the satellite uh, that we are uh, working on. Um, what I decided to do to develop this uh, prototype, this rig, was to simply uh, reconfigure uh, my existing microwave station uh, uh, to uh, have the 5.7 gigahertz transmitter uh, transmit and have the 10.3 uh, gigahertz receiver receive. All that requires is some jumpering of coax connectors on the panels of the hardware and uh, a surprisingly minor modifications in the DSP software. So with that background in mind, I'm going to reorient the camera to focus on the four elements uh, of the uh, transceiver and discuss them in a little more detail. Uh, this perspective is a panoramic view of the four elements of the uh, uh, transceiver. Uh, first element is the uh, computer and the computer screen in the background. And then in the foreground are the three uh, RF and DC modules that comprise the transceiver. We'll discuss each one separately. So I'll move in here and uh, take a view of the computer screen on which the uh, software, the GNU radio uh, open source DSP software is running. You can see at the top of the screen the receive pen adapter. The receiver is in, uh, is in the receive mode. And I'll move the camera uh, list a little bit and you can start to make out some of the details of the controls. These are rather ordinary transceiver controls. Uh, uh, receiver bandwidth, uh, the RIT uh, mode selection, that sort of thing. Audio volume and whatnot. And at the very bottom is the uh, transmit and receive selector and the mouse cursor is sitting on it. So while the transceiver is in the receive mode at the moment, if I were to select that bar, it would switch uh, the software and uh, the transceiver to the transmit mode. Then uh, when I'm done transmitting, I just uh, uh, select that bar again and I go back into the receive mode. So this free software is software you can program yourself and adjust to whatever uh, communication needs you have. So backing out, looking at the three modules, um, the center module is the uh, SDR and it contains the uh, EDIS uh, B210 dual transceive um, uh, SDR. And that transceive SDR actually covers a wide frequency range, uh, 50 megahertz to six gigahertz. That forms the basis of the whole transceiver operation. To the left, is a um, 10 gigahertz um, transverter from which I removed the um, transmitter part and just left the receiver for, for the purposes of this video. And on the right in the mini ATX uh, computer case is what I call the peripheral, which provides all the DC uh, control and uh, switching functions uh, for the uh, complete uh, rig. 
So let's zero in just a little bit on that uh, center module, the uh, SDR module. The big green board there is the um, Edis B210. The large IC in the center is the FPGA. The smaller IC at the bottom, towards the bottom of this screen, close to the RF connector, is the analog devices uh, analog uh, tuner. And that's the one that covers from uh, 50 megahertz up through 6 gigahertz. And near the top of the screen by the uh, USB 3 uh, connector, uh, the little IC there is the FX3 uh, data interface. Backing out just a little bit, you can see there's a lot of other circuitry in the SDR board. Uh, there are relays uh, for transmit receive functions. There are small amplifiers uh, on the right and on the left uh, to boost the transmitter power up from the one milliwatt level to closer to 200 milliwatts. Filters for VHF uh, Room, uh, stations like uh, the FM broadcast band and such, and, uh, uh, and uh, receive uh, double uh, protection on the receive uh, relays to, when, especially when running high power, which isn't particularly relevant here, to uh, prevent burnout of the RF components. You get a hint at the very bottom of the screen at all of the RF ports of the SDR are brought out to the front panel, which makes for easy uh, configuration of home station use, remote use, or in this case, uh, cross-band use. I'm going to move over and try to focus a little more clearly on this 10 gigahertz receiver. Again, the uh, transverter uh, has the transmitter mo submodule removed where that little coil of wire is, but you can see the wiring harness and relays. The golden uh, object in the center is the uh, uh, microwave mixer and um, I'll point to it with this pencil this is the uh, RF port and the uh, filter that goes to the antenna if the unit were intact this is the IF port coming out here going into the uh, IF interdigital filter and this is the LO port it goes through an amplifier the um, step recovery diode multiplier the SRD multiplier and then a relay control circuit and like the uh, SDR module over here, this has the RF ports uh, coming out on the panel. There's one missing here because I'm, I disassembled it. And that uh, is the 10 gigahertz receiver. Moving over here is the peripheral. It isn't very sexy, it's not RF, but it is the DC uh, control circuit for the whole rig. Uh, point here, you can see the uh, uh, keyer and uh, keyer monitor um, speaker back here is the, uh, the silver cube is the uh, 10 uh, megahertz double oven uh, crystal uh, oscillator to stabilize the synthesizer in uh, this uh, Edis uh, board. A lot of DC uh, circuitry here uh, and then um, these two green boards, this is a layer uh, of two green boards for uh, sequencing the relays and for uh, control of the um, um, latching relays in the microwave system. And you get a hint at the front panel here, um, the various uh, keyer controls and uh, master switches and such things. So I'd like to conclude um, with a, a summary statement. Um, it's uh, important to remember that uh, with an SDR, you really need a lot of uh, analog wraparound or analog interfaces to make for a, a real practical uh, radio. So in the center, you see all these relays and amplifiers and things uh, contained in the box. I call that the RF interface. That makes this uh, fancy, uh, almost magical green board into a, a real practical and useful radio. The interface on the uh, peripheral, rather, on the right is the DC interface. And that powers up all the various submodules and uh, sequencing their operation and controlling their function. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching. 
I want to thank Michelle for her interest and support in this project. And I uh, would certainly be willing to correspond with anybody who has further questions uh, about this project. Thank you very much.